Welcome to High Impact Growth, a podcast from Damagi about the role of technology in creating a world where everyone has access to the services they need to thrive. I'm Amy Vaccaro, Senior Director of Marketing at Damagi and your co-host. Today, I'm joined by Ali Flaming, Senior Technical Project Manager at Damagi, as well as a very special guest, Dr. Gurma Tades. Dr. Gurma has more than 25 years of experience in the Ethiopian health system, first as a doctor, and for the last 13 years as a health information systems expert. And for the most recent couple of years, he's been working as a project manager for JSI focused on Ethiopia's Electronic Community Health Information System, or ECHIS, as you'll hear us referring to it today. If you're working in digital health within a government, within an implementing partner or a funder, and interested in deeply understanding how governments can set up digital health systems to deliver long-term positive impact on health outcomes through a thoughtful combination of technology, human capacity, and government vision and investment, this episode's for you. It's a deep dive into the incredible revolution that has transpired in Ethiopia and that is still unfolding today with the paperless Horeda meaning administrative district in Ethiopia. I've literally been at conferences where members of the team working on this incredible digital transformation in Ethiopia have spoken about it and subsequently been mobbed by people wanting to know more about how Ethiopia has done what it's done. In digital health circles, Ethiopia is seen as a digital health darling for its incredible work. So this episode's an inside look into Ethiopia's journey, which started in 1991 with a series of government reforms and eventually made way for the Information Revolution Agenda, which was one of four transformation agendas launched in 2016. This story is about what it takes to effectively tie digitization efforts to tangible improvements in health service delivery in pursuit of universal health coverage, even when facing incredible challenges and obstacles. I hope you enjoy. I'm here with Dr. Gurma, who is based in one of JSI's Addis Ababa offices as the Electronic Community Health Information System, or ECHIS, which we'll refer to it as the project manager. Dr. Gurma has more than 25 years of experience working within the Ethiopian health system, first as a doctor, and now for the last 13 years as a health information systems expert. So Dr. Gurma, thank you so much for, for joining us. I was hoping you could start by explaining what the ECHIS program is and tell us a bit about your role as ECHIS project manager within JSI. As you said, I have been working with JSI for the last four years. The first three years, I have been working with another project. Then I moved to the ECHIS project for the last 18 months as a project manager. Prior to that, I have been working as in different aspects of information system development and implementation in the country at large scale. Prior to that, I have been a physician working in a rural setting as well as in the charity setting and in the governmental center. So I have spent most of my time supporting people and then the information system so that the people's heads can improve. Yeah, absolutely. I was hoping you could explain a little bit for our listeners who are not familiar with the ECHIS program. What is the goal of the program and how does it improve the health of the people in Ethiopia? Before I jump into the ECHIS program, let me give the audience the information system context so that they will have a well understanding about the ECHS. So after government change in 1991, government has been introducing several reforms in different sectors. And one of the reform is about HMS or the Health Management Information System in 2007. So with the principle of simplicity integration and standardization, the Ethiopian government tried to improve the health information system, which were full of problems like duplication of effort, poor quality of data. There is no coordinated effort and the data use was so poor. No one will see the data to make important decisions. So to change this situation, the government went through a reform and then following that reform, 
as the technology advances, European health information system starts to uh, move from paper to electronic system eventually. So what happened in the 2016, the ex Ministry of Health, Dr. Cassetta, try, uh, tried to declare or try to come up with a kind of health information system agendas. So there were four major agendas at that time. One of the agenda was information evolution. So following his remark speech in the health sector's annual review meeting, those who have stake in the development and improvement of the Ethiopian health information system, donors, partners, uh, and different government structures started to work on improving the Ethiopian health information system with the philosophy of improving, transforming the culture of data use for decision making and the digitization starts from the grassroots level point of care data collection till developing a kind of data warehouse and accessing the data through different business intelligence engines. So one of the major individual level data collecting or application that serve uh, individual level uh, data collection as well as supporting the process of providing, delivering preventive, therapeutic, and rehabilitative service to the community is electronic health, the community health information system, which is EHS. So EHS is in our e-health architecture and the most important component. So the EHS, the goal is to automate the health extension program packages. We had about 16 packages earlier. Now we have 18 packages of health services provided by the health extension workers. So to automate the, this daily routine services, health extension worker provide to the, to the individual communities and that household eleven is automated and uh, not only automating the service, but the workflow, but able to get on job aid from, from the system. So it has a kind of job aid service so that better efficient quality service is provided to the clients. The other goal that are very related with this is supporting the extension worker activity is that at the local health system, each health center has minimum of five health posters to which there is a strong referral system. So the referral linkage between the health center and the health post among the health extension worker is automated through this ECHS application so that the health extension worker can easily send the individual profile to the health center and the health center can, can prepare itself and provide the next level of service to the individual. So the exchange of information about a patient or about a client between the health extension worker and the care provider at health center level is automated. These are the main goal of ECHS program. Thank you so much. That was a really helpful history. I think talking all the way back to the digital revolution led within the government and how that gave birth to the ECHIS program and then how it's led to the digital job aids that we see today in use by the health extension workers and the facility level workers. You mentioned a few really important problems that the government was trying to address with going digital. You mentioned the duplication of effort that was happening on the paper system for quality of data and lack of data use for decision makers, lack of access to data in order to make programmatic and strategic decisions. I think those are some of the biggest problems that we see in, in health systems, you know, all around the world. And it's been incredible to see how Ethiopia has tackled this with this information revolution. I also like what you said about, you know, the end goal 
of all of this is for transforming the culture of data use. I think having that as kind of the, the pillar that all of these efforts are working towards, not just the development of ECHIS, but all of the other platforms within the ecosystem that you mentioned and how all of those are playing an important part into this larger goal and ambitious goal of transforming the culture of data use within the government and within the health programs. So thank you for touching on all of those points. I think it's been really inspiring to see how Ethiopia has gone about this digitization journey and not just doing it for the sake of digitizing, but for this this real end goal of data use and improved decision making. You've talked about some of the goals of the ECHIS program. And I'm curious if you can speak to what were some of the very early on goals with the ECHIS program when it was just launching and piloting? And how has that changed over the years as the program has matured? Since there were pockets of efforts to come up with a, a platform that serve the need of reaching all different types of community level services in different parts of the country. And a lot of partners were engaged early in 2060s and 50. So this individual mobile technology based efforts of collecting data, covering only a segment of the package, focusing on the maternal and uh, child health where uh, here and there. So as after the ministry decided to, to look for open source uh, and somehow robust and, and easily scalable, flexible system, the ComCare platform was chosen. So once the ComCare platform was chosen, the development of this customizing SHS based on the requirement started. Then I think in 2019, the Ethiopia starts to uh, deploy, release one of this, this SHS application in agrarian community. So the development was not completed when we moved to the implementation uh, paradigm. So we have been till the end of 22, all the modules that support all the HEP package were not developed and available, but we have been able to reach about 7,600 health posts in the agrarian area. So Ethiopia is expected to have about 18,000 health posts in the country, which it is growing year by year, but we are almost covering about more than one third of health posts in the agrarian area. So giving priority for the maternal and the child health, the implementation was going better, but it was a bit difficult to enjoy the benefit of having a digital tool at the community level. Very recently, as I explained earlier, we were able to complete the development. Now, health extension workers are getting trained and started to use the full modules to deliver services. So as a goal, the ministry in a shorter period of time wants to reach all, uh, all the agrarian health posts to reach all the health extension workers within within the coming three years. So this is reflected on the, on the strat strategic plan now, which is about to complete. JSI and me yeah, are involving in the development process. So the gross implementation of CHS should be there in order to enjoy all the benefits of CHS to the extension worker, to the client, to the cluster health center and to the program owners and coordinators. This is how we are going in terms of scale up and in terms of achieving our goal. So to reach the ultimate goal, we are trying to intensify the scale up of ECHS.
across the Caribbean area. All right, great. I think that's really helpful to hear how that iterative approach has allowed us to get to the point that, that we see the program is at now of going for, you know, the ambitious goal of reaching every single health post, you know, starting with just proving that value with some of those key maternal top health indicators. And then once that buy-in was received from the government and the health programs, really everyone's focus shifted to that local ownership. So as you mentioned, the open source component was really critical to the government in selecting ComCare as the ECHIS platform. So there was a lot of effort, I think around 2017, 2018, to make that transition to local ownership, both in terms of hosting, but also the development. So it was folks sitting in Ethiopia who were going and doing the scoping, gathering the requirements, and and actually further building out the, the ECHIS tool to meet the needs of, of the health extension workers and the facility users. And I think that early commitment to local ownership has really been one of the reasons why we see the success today and, and the scale that this program is at and is aiming to reach. We see the national dashboard and data use really being a focus at this point and it, the kind of maturity of the program. And now this transition to fully committing to digital and going paperless and reaching all of the health posts. So I think it's really inspiring to see how that step-by-step approach and really thoughtful, intentional approach has allowed the government to really take ownership of it and kind of drive the scale up of the program. You mentioned this goal of reaching all of the health posts. I was hoping you could actually explain a little bit for folks who have never been to a health post before in, in Ethiopia. I know you've spent a lot of time at them. We've visited some together. Can you explain a little bit what ECHIS actually looks like at the health post level for the health extension worker? How are they using it and how are they interacting with patients and providing improved care to patients using ECHIS? Okay. The Ethiopian health system, his service delivery has three tiers. So at the top, we have this tertiary level hospitals where specialized services are provided. And we have the middle layer where the general hospitals and more of the inpatient services, outpatient services, and a lot of services are provided except specialized care. At the third, the bottom layer, we have the primary hospitals, the health centers, and the health posts provide more of preventive and primary care and some therapeutic and rehabilitative care to the public. So having this in mind, when we come to the service, the kind of service provided by the extension worker to the community is that it is a more of preventive, more of health professional kind by nature. Of course, there are some follow-up and some of the mild cases diagnosed and treatment can be given by the health extension worker. So the package, the 18 packages are around the maternal health, the family planning service, the child health, immunization, and nutritional service, the hygiene and environment services. And very recently, we are also introduced the non-communicable disease screening the follow-up for HIV, TB screening, malaria screening, and screening for neglected tropical diseases. So when they provide these services, some of the services are provided at health post level, by which a client will come and, and receive the service. And some of the services are provided as an outreach reaching the household or how the home of the individuals. So there's extension workers need to plan and, and they are actually uh, the minimum of two health extension workers are assigned in health post. One health extension worker provides the outreach service. This, for example, the first day of the week, she will go for outreach service. And the other health extension worker remain as the post 
to to serve those who are coming to the health support. So they prepare what to do next, and accordingly they visit each household using their tablets mm-hmm. so that they can register the household, the household members, and provide those specific service using this ECHS application. So while they are providing the service, be it at outreach or at the health post level, first of all, the client and the household has to be registered on ECHS platform. And the second point is uh, there are lists of eligibles for that specific service and that is automatic in, in ECHS application and very helpful for them. Why and a lot of guidelines specific to that service are embedded. So when they go across the service provision, they will get support for this guiding different pictures. All these are contained in ECHS, the dose of medicine, the how frequent, what type of medicine is recommended. And if such and such symptoms are evident, what to do then? All this information are at her hand in the tablet, and she can do the next step accordingly. If necessary, she can also refer the patient using the tablet so that the health center will be aware of what kind of client, what kind of patient is coming from which location. So this is one way of doing the routine service. The other benefit of having SHS at the post level is that when they prepare their monthly report, because in the Ethiopian Health Information System, there are defined indicators and based on the indicators, predefined reports are expected on monthly, quarterly, annual basis. So there are certain data elements expected from health extension worker to report on monthly basis. So CHS is a solution to quickly produce such kind of report and communicate it to the health center, to the higher level. This is how it works. Another CHS has the focal person application. So a person who is a focal representative of the health program at the health center has an application that enable him to monitor the performance of each extension worker. He can set the targets, the plan, or the population based estimates so that he can use that application to track and monitor the performance of the extension worker. At the same time, there are additional features we developed with the Maggie to support his own routine activities. So he knows easily what to do next, what kind of activities are already performed and what are the remaining. And he can use that application to monitor his own activities as well as to monitor the work of the performance of the extension workers under him. This is how they're working. So Dr. Garma, I'm just loving hearing all of this, and especially in the context of digital health, I think Ethiopia is often held up as this digital health darling right there. You're, you're so much further advanced. So it's I'm literally just eating up every word you share about what, what that has looked like and just all the incredible thought that has gone into it. And it's been interesting as, as Demagi, you know, we've been working in this space for the last 20 years. And one of the ways that we look at getting the most out of digital is really thinking about how can digital be used not just to digitize a workflow, but to really create this lasting, robust foundation for health service delivery over time, right? And we think about three different pillars within that. We think about moving from just collecting the data to actually using this digital tool as a job aid, right, which you're describing, right, and actually allowing these health extension workers to be able to deliver better services, receive that decision support that they need, be able to refer into the the clinic as they need to. 
So that deepening of the service delivery and the quality of the service is happening, which I love. The second thing we look at is, can you use digital across many use cases, which you're describing beautifully, right? You've described 18 different service packages that Ethiopia is providing and being able to digitize each of those. So from maternal and child health to nutrition, to immunizations, to hygiene, and really being able to use the same digital platform to digitize each of those. You mentioned adding NCDs recently. And then the third thing that we we look at across governments as just like a real success factor is that long-term commitment to one platform. Because one of the things that we see across digital health programs that is so dangerous is that so much money and time goes into launching a new product or a new tool or a new app for one use case, and then it quickly dies out. And so I've just loved hearing the long-term focus that Ethiopia has had in terms of how do we own this and maintain this locally and scale this for the long haul? And you, you talk about this all dating back to 1991 and, and then kind of 2017 being a turning point of, of living on Tacom Care, which we're so happy to partner with you on. So just wanted to reflect back just the ways that I see Ethiopia embodying that, we call it our the impact delivery approach to delivering better impact, delivering more services and doing it over the long term. I'm curious to hear from you, Dr. Gurma, how has your approach to digitization allowed this ECHIS program to achieve this? Like maybe speak to that a little bit and maybe specifically around how you're able to add new services over time. Digitization and the benefiting from this technology is not an easy task. I, I explained earlier, uh, it is resource limited setting. We don't have connectivity as such, and we don't have enough infrastructure. We don't have enough resource to provide, to build capacity. And we don't have enough uh, developers and uh, those who are helping uh, the digital world to be more useful to the health system. So above all, it is really difficult to get the leadership commitment easily, because as you know, technology, uh, most people are in front of technology, but having such system in place and serving the intended purpose, uh, take longer time to see the fruits. So nobody will tolerate you to invest a lot and to see a product in a cumulative way. We have the very well structured government data system that has some drawback, of course, but it is very useful for the commitment and for the push for some of the political decisions and to bring resources to, to the health system. It is really important if the government or, or government set it as its priority in the health system. So one is the government dedication and commitment, especially at higher level. Uh, the second uh, point, uh, fortunately, many donors, many partners are willing to invest in this area and at the community level, especially to, to help people, to improve the health of people and technology is is, is the best option for that. So because of the availability of uh, willing uh, donors uh, and the partners uh, in the country and around the world to, to help us, that is helping us to see such fruit at this time. Probably the third one is in the European Health Information System, if you know, the reform identified uh, the skilled human resource in terms of information technology as a gap. And there were a lot of colleagues that produce HITs as information technologists as a diploma level graduate, as well as there are some universities who started to provide training at uh, degree level health informatics and the master's levels in the health informatics area. So the workforce 
uh, involving in this digitization effort is eventually increasing from time to time. And thanks to well, the advancement of technology, now the uh, mobile technology, the penetration is increasing. Now there is a really a conducive environment at grassroots level. And we have the I mean, the structure, the his extension program service and it's a governmental structure, the government commitment, the availability of donors and partners willing to support the sales system and the increment in workforce is collectively contributing for the sustainable support of the system. Dr. Grammer, that was such a rich response. And just to kind of reflect, you're describing a really challenging environment where, you know, there was a lack of the talented, like skilled human resources to accomplish these goals. Obviously, there's limited resources, lack of connectivity. So really a lot of odds stacked against you. And I love that three-part framework you described as really enabling this incredible digital health vision to unfold around, you know, the combination of government leadership and vision and just long-term vision from the government, the availability and interest of supportive partners and donors that wanted to support, which is incredible. And then I love how you described really investing long-term in the talent needed to make this possible, right? Because we think about technology as, oh, it's just technology, but you need humans that can make it work for you and customize it and really understand how the data is flowing so that you can get to that vision of better using data to drive better decisions. And so just love hearing about that, that investment in universities, creating health information technologists that can then work in the Ministry of Health. Yeah. Just to, to add on the technological side, when we select Comcare as a platform, the possibility of offline first option that there is extension worker to provide the service without worrying about connectivity. And whenever there is a connectivity, they can sync the data and make it available at the national level. So, so if, even when we select the technology, or, or uh, we were very careful. The second point is in our the information system, the leadership sometimes plan for you and force you to start things, but they never follow that. So in our situation, we learn it from that. And as you said clearly, the ministry has clear vision and dedicated technical working force to follow this. And everybody now started to think that digitization by itself doesn't change what we want to change in the health system. So there should be transformation of data use uh, culture in the country. So we have been working with the Maggie to explore and um, make the data available, accessible to decision makers at program and higher level so that as they can see the progress of the, each program and, and can, you know, take action in terms of, I mean, based on credible evidence that comes through ECHS application. So we are trying to make meaningful implementation as a same time. So I think we need to close the circle. Otherwise, most of the such effort customization and implementation may fail at some point and regress back. Thank you for summarizing. I think it's really helpful to get that context of how that early government investment has led to, you know, that commitment over time has led to where the ECHIS program is now, all of the new module development that you mentioned covering all 18 of the health areas that that the health extension workers are providing services for at the community level. You also started talking about something that we've been working on together is not just the data collection side at the community level and the digital job aid at the community level, but actually ensuring that that data is accessible to 
national level decision makers, regional level decision makers who are actually deciding where the future of the program goes and how to reinvest resources. So you talked a bit about the the dashboard, the national ECHIS dashboard that we've been working on and our, I know the launch is, is scheduled for next week, which is really exciting. I was hoping you could talk a bit about what the technologies are that are involved in the ECHIS ecosystem. So you were just speaking about ComCare and how that was selected because it is an open source tool, because it is an offline first job aid for health extension workers that fit within the needs of the Ethiopian context. You talked about the dashboard a bit. Can you talk a little bit more about the technologies being used there as well as other innovations that JSI and the government are investing in as part of this larger ECHIS ecosystem that Comcare is a part of? Yes. As we all know, there is no a single system that fits all the need. So our primary platform for ECHS is Comcare. In addition to Comcare platform, there is also a need to collect some uh, biometric information to ensure that each service is provided for the intended client. So uh, together with printers, we integrated biometrics in order to uh, provide services to the specific well-identified individuals. So integrating with the biometrics technology is uh, one uh, thing. The other thing is uh, to display the data, we know to make the data accessible for decision makers. We have been working with Gimagi or exploring and coming back with a business intelligence engine, which is open source, which can be affordable, easily customizable and serve our purpose is a superset. So Apache superset is selected national as a BI engine. So with Dimagi, we are very grateful for, for Dimagi that the, the Comcare sync uh, it's very helpful to refresh the data every time from the master database to the superset uh, database so that the data, as it is collected, it will be uh, visible, accessible at national level. Uh, with the latest, it will be one day or otherwise within 15 hours, the data collected by the extension workers will be a final. This is very important thing and important technology. The other innovations we are implementing with the ministry is in order to enhance the use of data, we need to link data use with the performance. The data should serve as evidence to give feedback for their extension workers so that they can improve their performance. So. To improve the performance of their health extension workers, supervisors, and health post in general, we have this performance management and performance-based incentive innovations, and we are implementing these two innovations. And we are using the SuperSec dashboard to track the information, and we are going to incentivize even some of top uh, ranking health extension workers and uh, health posts and group of supervisors based on evidence, based on data. So that in turn will improve the performance of the health extension work. So whenever you do things very transparent and database based on data, then that is uh, really helpful for the ecosystem to grow. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought up the performance management work because I think that's been a really inspiring use of technology to support a more holistic approach that the government, JSI, funded through SIF, working with Living Goods, all these different partners as Demagi, working to build that entire strategy and approach to improving performance and feedback for the health extension program, building that into the tools that 
we have in place now, the Comcare applications feeding data into the national superset dashboard in order to monitor that performance and give very targeted feedback to health extension workers. So as the government and JSI and different partners are thinking about, you know, what strategies they want to use uh, to improve the quality of the health system overall, they're thinking very carefully about what technologies can support those strategies. And I think the performance management approach that JSI has been leading in these six Veritas is a really good example of that. I really liked your overview of the different technologies and kind of how they're interacting with each other and how that's ultimately creating this ecosystem that's improving healthcare delivery and improving that data use for targeted feedback, improving performance, all of these larger goals. You mentioned the Comcare applications, you mentioned SimPrints and the biometric integration as well, which we were able to see that on Tuesday at one of the health posts they were delivering. The new tablets and the new SimPrints biometric fingerprint scanners. It's exciting to see the health extension worker demo how to use it. I got my fingerprint scanned, but also how important integration with the DHIS2 system, which is managing the reporting at the WERADA level and above for those key indicators. You mentioned the superset dashboard in the data warehouse as well, and how all of these different technologies are, they've been supported or created by all these different partners, part of the ecosystem funded by the different donors. We know Gates Foundation, USAID, SIF as well, all these different programs have contributed to this open source ecosystem. And I think that's really inspiring to see how a really strong government vision can help rally support across so many different funders, so many different partners, private and public sector to achieve this goal. So thank you for, for really walking us through all those different technologies, the innovations, and how all that's being leveraged to improve data use, improve the quality of delivery, which are these kind of pillars of success of the program. I wanted to ask if you could describe some of the challenges that the ECHIS program is facing right now at this stage of scale, where you're really gearing up to scale up uh, nationally to many more health posts and really trying to push the program to the point of paperless and to the point of really making use of the data that's being collected at the community level to inform decision making at the national level. What are some of the challenges that you are seeing right now at this point in the program? Yeah, we can see the challenges from different perspectives. So especially uh, when we see the infrastructure turning, it is individual level data and the service is provided on daily basis. So the data production is increasing. Probably when we go or further in, ter in terms of the scale up, imagine the amount of the volume of data hitting the ECHS data race. So this big data is coming and we need to prepare for that to handle this big data. And when we run some of the analytics, it needs more resources as we are facing challenges in case of the recently developed dashboard between the uh, mortgages for Ministry of Health. So the infrastructure, especially the capacity of the server and the data center in general has to be optimized and more investment has to come to strengthen the data center uh, thinking uh, the future is more demanding in terms of data repository of the data processing capacity. So that is one area. In the infrastructure category, we have this connectivity problems. Uh, as you know, of the internet penetration is very low. We had till very recent time only one internet service provider, which is Ethiopia Teleco. Very recently, Safaricom is added. So the internet penetration should improve 
the government is using tablets which were procured for different purposes. Now their capacity is very limited. So we need to think how best we can implement it by procuring tablets with, with civil investment. We are planning to go paperless for down six sites or districts. So to be realized, we were forced to procure tablets with better spec so that there is extension worker can use SHS application to provide their service without any inconvenience. So uh, tablets, capacity, the connectivity issue and the data center related infrastructure are the major challenge. The ministry uh, partners are trying to alleviate and optimize uh, renewable resources in order to uh, achieve success in this area. The other challenge is the application related challenge, especially uh, the development was delayed for some time and it was not completed as expected. So customization work is still uh, ongoing and uh, still remain uh, challenging. It needs more investment for the developers and the requirement specification and testing, piloting, all those things need a more investment. From implementation perspective, we need to reach more as posters and more as extension workers. So gross implementation is very important to really enjoy the, the benefit of digitization. So in the implementation area, the connectivity issue, the tablets, training cost, the training, the mentorship, supervision, all these are a kind of capacity building modalities. So it needs more investment in order to run and improve the situation. A lot of these challenges you've been mentioning are things that I've definitely heard a lot in the last week here in Ethiopia, talking about the challenges with limited infrastructure, the quality of the tablets, completeness of, of the application. All of that is really coming to a head and, and really the top priority of, of the ministry and the ECHI's partners right now leading up to this paperless Rareda transition. And I think we've mentioned it a few times in this conversation. I was hoping you could explain what is the paperless Rareda transition? What is the goal of that effort led by the ministry? It seems a bit ambitious, but the ultimate goal of our effort is to improve the outcomes of the community. That cannot be achieved simply by putting those gadgets to the extension workers. We need to make it a more a meaningful implementation. So in the previous uh, APR, the annual performance review, the chief director, uh, Dr. Meratab, uh, went to, you know, to do things in a meaningful way, rather than to go to cover more districts. And that is also important, but it has to be in a meaningful way. So how in that day, there was a big discussion with, with the ministry people were there, the program people were, were there, and the funder went there, and there was a lot of discussion, and we tried to come up with if we ideally implement ECHS, what would it look like? And what kind of service is possible to provide in terms of safety of the individuals, in terms of quality service, efficient service, effective service, and accessibility of the service. So we need to bring a kind of operational definition, and that operational definition is specified and articulated by the technical working group. So at least all the services has to be provided by ECHS or using ECHS. All the household 
and the members has to be registered on SHS. The report, which are important for the Ministry of Health, has to be generated for ECJ. The referral system between the health post and the health center should be a through the ECHS and it should be automatic. And the ECHS has to be, yeah, the special, the job aid component of ECHS has to influence. And the data use, the data generated by ECHS has to be used in order to improve the service. So to achieve these different goals, we need to have enabling the environment in terms of tablets, power source, connectivity, the order that has to Im improve to accept every range in this regard. All those extension workers need to be trained with all SHS modules, all the new features of the enhanced focal app has to be a taught for the focal person. The dashboard has to be accessible by BGCU, the, the primary healthcare unit, the, which is the health center and the water down. And the PCHS has to be interoperable with DHS through for a report that are exchange. These are, you know, the key elements that we are struggling to achieve or to reach to the climax of uh, their implementation in a specific order to say that this order is paperless and providing the service digitally. It's a really exciting and, as you said, ambitious goal. And I think it's just a really cool example of exactly what governments who are scaling up an ECHIS program like this should be aiming for. It, this really is the the end goal that can really show the full impact when you really commit to going digital and going paperless. At the point that the program is at now, it's many years in, there's been good success, there's been strong leadership and commitment at the government level. Now, that really intentional approach that you mentioned of really getting it right in a few worritas, making sure that that environment is there for the health posts to go fully paperless and really implement the digital job aid fully to see what that benefit is when the full commitment is there. I think that really intentional approach is really interesting to hear about. And I absolutely see it and have been hearing it from all the different partners who have been involved in helping create that environment that we've been meeting with in, in the last week here, here in Addis. You know, you mentioned there's the full module development, the tablets have to be in place that, that work well in our performance. The servers need to be stable. The dashboards need to be enabling data use and decision-making. And that interoperability with DHIS2 needs to be in place so that they're no longer dependent on paper reporting. And so once all of that is successful and is in place at the health post level, the AGWs, they can then stop using paper and fully, fully depend on the digital job aid uh, to do their work, to improve the quality of their service delivery, but also to ensure that all of that data is actually making it up through the ecosystem and being used for decision-making rather than trying to maintain two parallel systems and all of the energy that, that gets diverted by trying to maintain paper and digital at the same time. I wanted to ask from your perspective, if all of this is successful, once all of this is in place at, let's say these few Waredas where the, the test, the paperless Wereda test is going to be implemented, what could it mean in terms of impact if this is successful, if the transition to paperless succeeds? That's a great question. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, so our ultimate goal is not to see a station worker having a tablet, fancy tablet, and playing with that. No. Our ultimate goal is to improve the health of the community. As you know, one of the sustainable development goals is to reach universal health coverage. 
So to reach a universal health coverage, the health, the especially those preventive health interventions like uh, reaching those underserved people with vaccine, contraceptives, nutritional, all other health services is very important. So when we implement successfully the paperless water, we are trying to ensure this uh, service coverage with good quality uh, is in place. So that has to be also a continuous process. So reaching to the ultimate goal me, beginning that the, enjoying the benefit of digitization. So every Warada has to be digital. So the whole nation benefits from digital era. I'm so glad that you brought it back to that end goal. You talked about reaching universal health coverage. That is really what the paperless Warada is trying to do. And in order to improve the health of the community as kind of what everyone is really rallying around this effort in order to achieve. And, and the goal of implementing digital to improve the quality of service delivery is really at the end of the day, all an effort to improve the health at the community level where these digital tools are implemented. And yeah, just how you spoke to how going fully digital can help achieve that. But also, you know, looking at it realistically that the process of going paperless has to be an iterative approach, just in the same way that the entire history of the ECHIS program, as you've laid it out, has been an iterative approach, um, both to get that buy-in along the way, to test out the successes and learn from them, and, and to be able to pivot and react to address the challenges that we've seen. And I think that really is how this program and the government has been able to see the success that it has and has gotten to this point of being able to really commit and to be talking about going paperless is such a massive achievement. And I think, you know, one of the first places to really make that commitment. Yeah. Uh, just to iterate uh, through multiple iteration, where we may reach to the digitization of our paperless water down. But that is the beginning of the health system benefiting from digitization. It might be an end from the digitization perspective, but it is a beginning of getting full benefit of digitization or injecting the benefit of digitization into the health system. So we have been trying to serve the people without such fancy technology. But with addition of this technology, we can go better. We can reach better. We can deliver more with a better quality, safe practice, and efficient way. So that will be easy if our digitization effort reached to the fullest level. Absolutely. I think that definitely resonates those goals of better and more of really leveraging digital to improve the quality of service delivery, provide better services to the community and reaching more people across the country. And it's really inspiring to see how Ethiopia is leveraging the ECGIS platform and the entire ecosystem of tools that we've talked about today in order to, to achieve those goals. They sound so simple, yet they are such big and complex and inspiring efforts. I wanted to ask one last question, maybe to wrap up a bit and get one last nugget of knowledge out of you, just given your wealth of experience, knowing that the people who will listen to this podcast and our audience includes a lot of implementers of digital health programs. What advice would you give to another country or another program who's working to achieve something similar to what you've achieved in, in Ethiopia with ECHIS? Whenever any country starts such a digitization program, they must be very clear about the hands of journey. And their vision has to be very clear. What do we want to get? Having, investing on these digital uh, gadgets, 
to the health system. So they have to be very strategic and they should have the vision. And then after, if they have the vision and the strategy, then they have to prepare ahead of time into, into three major areas. One is infrastructure. They have to assess their infrastructure uh, level and try to be ready to accommodate the interventions they want to, to go with. The second area is the, the governmental commitment from national to the lowest level of administration has to be well communicated, well aware of the added value of uh, these digital tools to, into their health system. So communicating the added value of the new technology, the new intervention is important. Throughout the health system, they are going to implement such kind of system. And not only communicating, but preparing enough, allocating adequate resources. You know, they have to believe that investing on digital technologies or digital gadgets, the investment might not be in the coming one or two or three years. It is a longer term investment and the return is not in terms of cash, in terms of having healthy people, productive people. So while you have these healthy and productive people, then it will indirectly boost the economy and that will be the return for the nation. So everybody has to be conversant and try to maximize their investment or resource allocation toward these things. The third area is capacity. Capacity is important, you know, the skill and willingness of uh, people in the program area, in the hardware, in the software development areas has to be organized and mobilized or they should get trained, they should get an, uh, the necessary skill or should uh, collaborate with vendors to start to build um, in country capacity, it, gradually they will be able to support themselves and as well as each vast geographical area. Because if you have very limited capacity in terms of human resource, if, even if you have the infrastructure, the willingness, the commitment, the resource, it doesn't work. And the other way is also true. So if they are ready, committed, and strategies have a vision and then um, build the capacity and leveraging or optimizing the available resources after they conduct the kind of readiness assessment. And then it will be easier to mobilize the resource because they know their status and go for digital. And they have to, of course, monitor and uh, track, follow, and give feedback. Well, uh, these things are really important. Yeah, absolutely. I think your response is actually a really great summary of our conversation today and of the evolution of the ECHIS program that you've described. You know, you mentioned the need for that really clear vision about the health objective, not just the objective of going digital. What is it all for? And all of the forethought and preparation that's required to make sure the infrastructure is prepared as well as the, you know, the local capacity and that that will exist not just now, but in the future. You know, when you talked about the investment in university programs to ensure that the next generation of technologists are trained on ECHIS and are able to maintain it. That's an incredible amount of forethought. And I think it's just a great example of that. You also talked about local capacity and needing that mix of private and public local entities coming together to support this entire ecosystem, not just the government and not just private tech companies. It really does require that broad capacity across public and private sectors. 
And then I think the one that you mentioned that has really stood out and I think is a great final point is that government commitment and investment in the program and that they need to see that investment and the return of that as a healthy population, not numbers in a dashboard or a number of tablets that have been distributed. And I think all of those kind of pillars of success and, and advice that you mentioned, I think that really captures the reasons why this UCJS program has been able to reach the, the pivotal point that we see it at today of fully committing to paperless and, and seeing the impact of that. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing all of this knowledge and all of your time with us, but also your deep commitment and many years that you have dedicated to this work, as we talked about, as a doctor, as a health information system expert. And yeah, it was an absolute pleasure to speak with you, as always. Any last points that you wanted to make, Dr. Grimma, before we fully wrap up? Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Probably two pointers. One is I want to, to thank the Maggie for creating this opportunity to speak about our experience to a greater audience so that they can reproduce this effort to somewhere else. And I would like also to thank the Ministry of Health of Ethiopia and partners working on ECHS, especially the US funders like USAID and the C. I design all those also uh, stake in this uh, ECHS program. The second point is when I was thinking about the technology benefits to human, I feel that the world is short of delivering what uh, we are expected. You know, we have a lot of technological advancements, but it is not reaching and helping people in terms of their health wise. So. In the future, I think, especially the artificial intelligence, the drones technology, all the together with the information system should facilitate better reach those underserved people, especially living in Africa. So those who are rich and do not know where to invest. Uh, I think I, they have to look to this area and help the people through technology, through digitization. So this message is for those who are money, who are willing to donate or to invest, but do not know where to lose that. Thank you so much to Dr. Gurma for taking the time to break down the key ingredients to Ethiopia's incredible progress with digital health. I'll share a few of the insights that struck me in particular. First, it all starts with a really clear vision driven by the government. Ethiopia is focused on improving health outcomes and service delivery in service of achieving universal health coverage. And they're looking to change the culture of data use so that data collected from digital health efforts actually informs improvements. They're not looking to digitize for the sake of digitizing. They're looking to deepen and improve services with digital. This government ownership and commitment, especially at the highest level, has been essential to its progress and long-term trajectory. Second, communicating the goal clearly and allocating resources appropriately is essential. Ethiopia benefits from a strong ecosystem of donors and partners who are willing to invest in this long-term effort, largely because the government has been so clear about the goals and purpose. And they've been able to speak to the benefits of its overall effort in terms of having a healthy population, which leads to incredible returns in the long term. Third, invest in the people necessary to create the change you want to see. Ethiopia has invested in university programs to ensure it would have the talent to implement this incredibly ambitious long-term effort, knowing that the electronic community health information system and now the paperless Boreda require specific expertise. Fourth, we need to move from just looking at technology as a means to digitizing a paper process, but look at how technology can create true impact delivery and support better, more and sustained impact. This looks like ensuring that the services delivered are higher quality and more meaningful, and that health workers have access to the best tools to guide their service delivery. As we've heard about with Ethiopia's health extension worker application, 
and supervisor or focal person application, using the same digital platform to support many use cases, as Ethiopia has been doing by digitizing 18 different health services and taking that now to the next level with the paperless Roida effort. And it looks like investing in building a highly scalable, long-term platform and ecosystem of tools that can support sustained impact over the long haul and doing this with an iterative approach. It will not be one and done. You heard how thoughtful Ethiopia has been about connecting ComCare with Simprints for biometrics, DHIS2 for data warehousing, Superset for data visualization, and more. That's our show. Please like, rate, review, subscribe, and do share this episode with someone who you think might find it useful. It really helps us grow our impact. And write to us at podcast at demagi.com with any ideas, comments, or feedback. This show is executive produced by myself. Danielle Sheldon is our producer. Sarah Strauss is our editor. Cover art is by Sudan Chikanth. And a shout out to Ali Flaming and Namrata Tamar for their work on this episode. 